wave of violence that has plagued Israel over the past year has sparked many Israelis to consider purchasing a firearm to protect themselves in the face of terror. In fact, over the last seven months, there has been an 88% increase in the amount of women receiving firearm licenses compared to the same seven-month period last year. That's according to the National Security Ministry. Currently, to apply for a firearm, Israeli citizens must meet a threshold of eligibility, which factors in military experience, profession, and residency. But in recent months, National Security Minister Ethan al has pushed to ease those restrictions. Critics are concerned that more arms in the public sphere could increase domestic violence, suicide, and crime deaths. And to break it down, the firearm industry here in Israel, I'm joined by I-24 News science and technology correspondent Ariel Evan Waldman. So Ariel, tell us why is there a sudden jump in Israeli civilians wanting to buy a, par a firearm? Well, the obvious reason is the massive amount of terror attacks we've seen over the past year and a half, two years now. Every last one of these attacks, or the majority of these attacks, have been stopped by somebody on scene with a firearm to return fire. And in many cases, that person was a civilian. The idea being, well, if it happens near you or if you're at the scene, would you rather there be somebody that can return fire and end the attack or run and hope the guy runs out of ammunition? So. Right. Given that sort of uh, background, people are trying to arm up. The question is, is the government actually making that possible? And the answer is largely no. We say that in, uh, National Security Minister Itamar Ben-Gvir has pushed to make it easier. He's made statements that he would like it to be easier. These are a very distinct two things, because nothing about the categories of who's eligible has actually changed. The only thing he's done is staffed the department that makes the approvals with more people so they could do it faster. The actual eligibility requirements, which are incredibly strict to the point where less than 1% of Israelis have a legitimate firearms license, have not changed one bit. All right. And setting the military aside, what is the, the value of the firearms industry here in Israel currently? So it's actually not a very big deal because we're talking about the civilian market. Right. Given the size of the amount, the civilian market in Israel, it's virtually nothing. But most of the firearms companies that have any serious market cap are the ones selling to the civilian firearms market in the United States. So you have companies like IWI, which markets the Tavor rifle, the same one used by the Israeli uh, military to civilian buyers in the United States as well as Canada. You have a few other companies doing similar things, the Jericho pistol being famous among them. You have civilian models of the Uzi, the Galil. Again, big names that had their use in the Israeli military, repurposed for the American civilian market or the export civilian market. None of those are available for civilians here in Israel. So when you're looking at the firearms industry here, it's entirely the military and that small amount of people that can try to get one in Israel. So it's a largely export market versus here domestically. If I wanna buy a gun today, what are the requirements and how much does that cost here in Israel? Well, it depends how you're looking at it. If you want to buy a gun legally, which is, I assume, what we're talking about Ariel, here. Ariel, we're keeping it safe in here. <laughs> of course, well, you can't talk about the economics of it without talking about the massive criminality and black market Absolutely. that the restrictions have created in and of itself. So you still have to go through an eligibility process that requires you to have been either A, a former combat soldier, that's uh, rank 07 or higher, B, live in a dangerous location classified by the Israeli government as dangerous, largely over the green line, or C, be in a profession that involves you being sent out to one of those dangerous areas, a security guard, or in a position where you are guarding large amounts of money, such as transporting gold around the country. If you don't make one of those three criteria, well, good luck, you're not getting anything. Once you meet one of those criteria, okay, there is a token fee for applying and renewing a license every two years. That's not the real cost. When you're talking about the actual cost is the firearms and accessories, massive amounts of taxes on both. Let's say you take a gun that would be $500 in the United States. Let's take your classic uh, Glock 19 pistol, for instance. In Israel, that's going to cost you at least double that, about 4,000 shekels for the exact same thing. The optics that you might put on at $300 in the United States, about $1,000 here. But again, it's just a matter of market size, supply and demand. And because the market here is so small, they're going to have to make up their profits otherwise. But that is, what, I, as I said before, driving a colossal black market as people try to arm up one way or another. Absolutely. And speaking of that black market, which areas of Israel are mostly targeted? 
Well, you can see it yourself in the news. It's a huge black market in the Arab sector, probably the biggest black market. You see that most in the south in Beersheba. You see it in Lod as well, cities known for their high crime. But there's a simple economic model here. One, how much is it on the black market? And that's going to answer who's getting it. And that's because Israeli media have done some estimates based on telegram channels. They've infiltrated and found out what they're selling it for. You can get a pistol on the black market, the same one that costs you 4,000 shekels or $1,000 to get legally, about 40,000 shekels on the black market, 10 wow. times as much. That's a ridiculous amount. The M16s that are so often used in these terror attacks on the black market are selling for around 100,000 shekels, which is a preposterous price, and only the richest people can get them. And yet, simultaneously, we see them very, very commonly in the hands of both violent criminals as well as terror organizations. And that's because for the violent criminals, it's a certain economic calculation. If you're part of an organized crime uh, scheme, that's all going to pay for itself in the protection rackets you're extorting from people at gunpoint. And that's a huge economy if we're talking about Israel's South and Arab sector. So essentially, whoever can afford it won't be able to get it, especially if you're living in the center. Oh, it's very interesting. Our 11 woman, thanks for joining us today.